Hi, this is Suzanne in Ohio. Well, another project using the fabric collage technique that me and my sewing group uh, have been using. I had to show you this one because it's not quite finished. And at first I wasn't going to, and I thought, well, that would be interesting to me if I could see it before it was all done. And it gives you a better idea how these things go together. Now, if you've watched my other videos, you know myself and some friends have come in this winter uh, to form a little sewing group. And we did several projects of making fabric baskets, and then we got on to this fabric collage technique. So, oh, sorry about that. I should have turned my phone down. Um, let me turn that off. Sorry. Um... Hold on a second. I'm going to turn this phone all the way down. All right. So um, this is my sister's. And uh, the first one she did was a clematis blossom. And I'll show you that. This, was an, this is an image of the first fabric collage that she did. It's about, I'd say, 12 by 12, maybe 13 by 13, this clematis blossom. And you can see we've been making greeting cards out of them. But this is her second project here. And I just think this Blue Jay is absolutely outstanding. You have to look really close to realize, especially in his face, he looks real. It looks like a photograph for a second. So I want to show you this and uh, kind of talk to you about what her thinking was. So if you're doing any of these projects yourself, it really helps to hear how somebody else's mind worked. All right. So she did this Blue Jays, obviously very, um, oh, detailed is the word, and the branches even. Look at these branches. So um, the process that we used was to create the fabric collage images with Steam Seam 2 light, and we did a technique where you press your pieces of fabric that have the adhesive on them, you press them onto netting, and it's large netting, just like you see right here, only I used yellow, so it didn't obscure the photograph. So you have a black and white photograph underneath, and then you decide what your shapes are, press it on there. After you get the fabric collage part done, you iron it. You fuse it together, and this whole thing becomes one giant applique, including the branches. So what she did uh, was, after she fused it, cut away the netting, and then we were trying to audition different backgrounds and nothing looked good because he is very busy, um, the branch is very intense, and nothing just looked quite right. So together we put our heads together and decided on this white background and to cause it to be cohesive, I suggested some of these stamped images with rubber stamps. And it adds just enough to make him look nestled in there without detracting from him. So that's how we came up with the background. And then it was her decision to do this tiny little echo quilting. Now you can see some of it right here that she's just barely started. Um, the shadow, the light shadows kind of make it show up pretty well. And she's in the process of quilting all through here. Now, you don't have to quilt the whole thing. You know, you can taper off uh, wherever you want to. You don't want to go from tight little lines, echo quilting, into nothingness. So maybe what she's doing here is kind of fading it off into nothingness. I'm not sure. I haven't talked to her. Um, we've been real busy, and she hasn't got around to finishing him. 
So uh, let's see, what did I leave out? Well, after you have your applique, which in this case includes the branch and the bird together, all forms an applique, then put it on your background and fuse it again because you still have some adhesive under here and that will secure it to your background. If you're uncertain about how stable it is, I suggested to the girls that they go around the edge of their applique with invisible thread and just tack it down all the way around. Now for a project like this you could do free motion sewing but I think this is so delicate and so refined and very detailed you would be taking away from an image like this to do it on the machine. So before you start something like this ask yourself if you like hand sewing because it does require some of it. So I haven't scanned this beautiful thing yet because uh, she's not finished but we did scan some others as you saw <coughs> excuse me, with um, the greeting card I show you. Here's another uh, image. This was my bluebird and I turned him into a greeting card. Now I'm going to be filming another card, almost, or another video, almost immediately after I finish this one to show more of what we have done with these greeting cards. So if that part of it interests you, be sure and look for that one. All right, for those of you that love hand sewing, fabric arts, uh, even paper arts, whatever your expertise is or your genre, thank you for watching and um, like and subscribe if you haven't and leave me a comment if you have any questions, I'll get back to you. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching.